Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about Steam Deck. I pre-ordered this device because I wanted to have a geeky cool Linux based device which can also play games. This was my basic expectation uh, be before a Valve actually made it available for us. So recently there has been a development in a certain milestone. We have now reached 5000 Steam Deck verified games and 10,000 Steam Deck playable games. So what is the difference between these two? Basically this is Valve's program uh, which verifies games and verifies that PC games are actually playable and completely compatible with uh, the Steam Deck. So what does Deck Verified even mean, right? So as you can see on the screen uh, the input the title should have full controller support, use appropriate controller input icons and automatically bring up the on-screen keyboard when needed. Seamlessness, the title shouldn't display any compatibility warnings and if there is a launcher it should be navigatable with a controller. Display, the game should support the default resolution of Steam Deck, which is this one or this one. Have a good default settings and text should be legible. If running through Proton, the game and all its middleware should be supported by Proton. This includes anti-cheat support. And what does Steam Deck playable means? It basically means that the game is fully playable except some quirks like uh, sometimes the keyboard will not pop up automatically and if you need to input something like your character name you will have to press a special key combination on Steam Deck to bring up Steam Deck's integrated keyboard instead of the one that should be in-game and some other usual cases of um, incompatibility is like when the launcher is not navigatable with the um, controller so you have to uh, you use the touch screen to start the game or something like that. Basically all of all of the 10,000 playable games I I would be willing to argue that uh, most of them, if not all, are really playable. And by really playable I mean uh, having just a tiny quirk that's not that relevant for the game. But of course uh, having all four green check marks uh, would be even better. So from the perspective of, of having uh, 5000 games fully verified, I think this is a huge milestone for Steam Deck and a big thing for gaming on Linux overall. So just in case for all of you who are still unfamiliar with the Steam Deck, this is basically a PC. This is a tiny PC like a laptop with a really good GPU inside. It has screen resol resolution similar to what uh, Nintendo Switch does. It has a good battery life. It has AMD uh, processor and AMD Radeon graphics cards uh, all on one chip like Xbox and PlayStation do it nowadays. It runs Linux, uh, basically this is Arch Linux modified by Valve and it runs games in a special full screen mode of Steam. There is an option to switch to desktop mode where the device acts like a fully fledged desktop that can download flat pack applications and you can install other launchers and emulators and basically it starts behaving like a regular PC but if you want to have this device used as a console you can fully do that basically it's just download and click to play this is what Valve did for this device of course on the market there are several competitors and this is by no means the first device of this kind but what this device is and this device is the first one that truly popularized PC gaming in such a handheld mobile form factor. After this one Asus has re uh, released a Rogue Ally device which is uh, in terms of specifications stronger device than this one uh, with somewhat weaker battery life and it runs Windows so basically it doesn't really behave like a console as Steam Deck does it behaves like 
like a PC with Windows and whatever launcher you put on it, right? So where I'm going with this is that uh, one of my favorite things about this device is precisely what I just said. It behaves like a gaming console and it gives you the opportunity to just sit down, relax and play games. There is no fussing required uh, with this device such as what you would expect from a normal PC, whether it be on Linux or on Windows. With regular PCs, you, you always have something to configure, something to tune, something to take care of before you can actually start playing the game. And the other favorite thing about this device, uh, for, for me personally, is going to sleep mode. Uh, basically, it works exactly as Switch does in this regard. Uh, when you are in a single player game, uh, you just click the power button when you want to take a break and two days later you can just click the power button again and continue where, where you left off. In terms of performance with this device, through my whole time I have been using this device uh, generally the performance is really good and by really good I'm trying to set some expectations here. This is not a powerful gaming desktop PC that draws 500 watts. This is a 15 what device similar to Nintendo Switch in terms of how much energy it needs to operate. So from that perspective it has really good performance and by really good uh, I mean that most games that I play can be played at 60 frames per second at this native resolution but sometimes you gotta make some compromises and these compromises usually are in terms of battery life. So this basic device uh, that I have bought on day one uh, it has a battery life from 2 hours to 8 hours. 8 hours is when you are playing a really light game something like a retro emulation or, or similar in that regard and two hours is when you're playing a latest AAA game that's tuned up to the very limits of this device when the fan is blowing and uh, everything that goes uh, together with uh, high performance, right? In the meantime, Valve has released an OLED model which has a higher capacity battery. That fan can go up to 12 hours of the usage where not much system resources are needed and all the way down to, I would say, like three hours of uh, high performance usage. One of the things about the Steam Deck, uh, which the competition cannot really do is the fact that this chip can go very low in terms of uh, how much energy it needs to function. So when you have a game that really needs a tiny little bit of uh, performance, this chip can go as low as possible in order to save as much battery as needed. For example, a Rogue Ally uh, is overall much more performant device than this one but it doesn't have this functionality to lower the chips uh, performance all the way down so it can save so much battery so the battery life is usually i would say half in comparison with steam deck when you're playing a game that really does not require much performance one of the specialities uh, about uh, steam deck and in terms of software is for example that uh, there is an option for developers uh, of the of games to use uh, when you press the power button basically you're uh, making a um uh, a break, you're, you're pausing your game. Uh, if the developer has implemented this, uh, when you press the power button, the Steam Deck will save your progress, it will upload your save game to Steam, and if you continue on another device uh, while your uh, Steam Deck is sleeping, your other device will continue from the place uh, where you have saved uh, the game by clicking the power button. So next time when you come back to the Steam Deck, then the Steam Deck will tell you that you have a newer uh, save from the other device and you should restart the game. So this is really cool. Another cool thing is that developers have been uh, starting to embrace the Team Deck as a, let's say, a console, uh, because they have been optimizing games specifically for this one. One, one of the first games that had a, a completely separate uh, graphic settings was Cyberpunk uh, 2077. Basically, in every PC games you have low settings, medium settings, high settings, uh, etc. And Cyberpunk was one of the first games uh, which 
which has included special Steam Deck settings in the game. Later on, uh, games have been starting to embrace Steam Deck uh, as just another console. And for example, Skyrim and Fallout 4, these games don't actually have any PC settings in it uh, because Bethesda has simply removed those settings and decided to use the default settings that are optimized for this device only. So you can just install the game, press play and get on with it. Another cool thing is the um, Songs of Conquest game. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's a um, turn-based strategy game uh, akin to Heroes of Might and Magic 3. And what this does with the uh, Steam Deck is that it has a special mode uh, where the frame rate drops from whichever you prefer to have uh, in this game to a really low frame rate. I think it's like 20 FPS or maybe even 10 at all the scenarios where your characters aren't exactly moving. And because of the way uh, that this game is programmed, you don't really feel it because there are a lot of static situations in this game uh, and uh, this dynamic frame rate doesn't really uh, cause anything visually. Basically, it's something that you cannot feel during gameplay, but it saves a ton of battery and the whole device is a lot cooler and uh, runs for a longer periods, periods of time. So th these are some of the things that developers have embraced uh, with this device and this is uh, very cool to see. So if we go back uh, to the um, numbers, right, we can go to Steam DB. Let's choose platform, Steam Deck playable and verified. And you can already see that we now have 15,000 games available. And if we do another filter, let's just go with this year. So in the first half of this year, we have had over a thousand games made for Steam Deck. I mean, it's made for PC, right? But also verified and tested for Steam Deck. So one of the cool games, for example, this is Balatro. This is like roguelite uh, card game. Th these are all highly rated games, right? For example, PAL World and Goat Simulator. I have made a short list here about the scores. Goat Simulator uh, currently has a score of 97% of satisfaction on Steam by user surveys. Uh, Persona 3 Reloads 95% of satisfaction. Shin Megami Tensei The Fifth Vengeance uh, 95% of user satisfaction. Dune Imperium also 95%. Hades 2 94%. PAL World 93%. Star Wars Dark Forces Remaster 90, V Rising 80 and 8 and so on. So these are user scores for Steam Deck verified and playable games. So where I'm going with this? Uh, this device is constantly getting a lot of new games and basically if you would intentionally limit yourself to just this one device you would have a ton of games to play. And this is where I'm going to wrap up this video. I mean, if you have your favorite Steam Deck games, I would love to hear in the comments which ones do you play at the most on your uh, devices. And I don't know, uh, like, subscribe and hit the bell button to have notifications for my next video. I'm gonna see you in the next one.